You're listening to To Hatchapod with Key Budge, Corey Costello, and Greg Garrett. It's To Hatchapod time again. Key Budge, Greg Garrett, Corey Costello. Guys, how are you? Doing good. Thank you, Key. Good as can be, man. Yeah, for sure. We've kicked off season three. We didn't mention it in the last episode, um. but last episode was our debut of season three of To Hatchapod. Dang, it seems like yesterday, doesn't it? Yeah. Holy should we, moly. Should we start putting, like, I think a lot of shows now do, like, season three, part one, and part two to get people to, like, <laughs> hang out longer? I don't know. Maybe we should do that. We do. Well, so what we do is we describe it season one, two, and three. So we're season three. And then episode one uh-huh. was last time. Gotcha. And then overall, it was episode 118. Mm, so nice. today is our 119th episode. We're going to talk about something special. We did something at our recent city council meeting, Greg. We made a proclamation. And that's not something that we do every month. It's not something that happens, you know, all the time. So this was something special. Yeah, Key, we don't do proclamations uh, very often. But when we do, we take it very serious. And in this case, it was a proclamation uh, for Kern County to honor the system where you can safely surrender a baby within 72 hours of birth. And I know we have a great guest today, so I'm excited to hear about the details associated with that. We have a returning guest today, (laughs) Jana Schlegel, our communications manager for the Department of Human Services. Jana, welcome back to Tehachapod. Thank you. I'm glad to be back. Love talking to you guys. We, we, We had you on, I think, in season one, brought you back in season two. We've talked about the Holiday Cottage. We've talked about the overall human services. Mm -hmm. But today, you had told us, hey, we're going to ask the city of Tehachapi to do this proclamation about safe surrender. And not just city of Tehachapi, you've also done it for the county of Kern and the board of supervisors also, correct? That's correct. We just did that today, in fact. So, yeah, the, the reason we do the proclamations, and thank you guys for doing that, the city of Tehachapi, the reason we do that is just to increase the awareness about the safe surrender baby law so that people in crisis know that they can surrender a baby up to three days of birth at any fi- into the arms of any fire station or emergency room staff. So um, the mama or the person surrendering has up to 14 days to reclaim the baby if they are some change in their life and they realize they do have help or something changes, they can reclaim the baby. Um, and if not, if they don't reclaim the baby, then that baby is in an adoptive home to a family, goes to a family who has been waiting to adopt a child. So it's a really, really good law that uh, that's goal is really to save babies from abandonment. You know, and at the council meeting, division chief uh, Andrew Kennison was there to represent the fire department and the partnership collaboration with human services with the safe surrender program. And he threw out a few statistics that were mind numbing. It was actually, I couldn't believe it. I think he said six babies had been surrendered. 90 babies have been safely surrendered in the county since they started tracking in 2006 Mm -hmm. and then six in 2021 alone. That is, I can't imagine the circumstances around surrendering a baby and I'm I'm so happy that you and your staff are there, and the and the ER departments and the fire departments can can be a positive part of such a terrible time for mm-hmm. someone save a life. They're really just they're saving a life. Yeah, they are. And and actually, since we printed our press release, the uh, the there has been one additional baby. So for 2022, there has been one safely surrender. Mm-hmm. So that brings our total to 91 now. So um, 91 babies have been safely surrendered in Kern County since 2006, like you said. And I believe six of those babies were reclaimed. So um, they that means the person came back and their circumstance changed. And when that happened, we we make sure that they don't need any help. We make sure the baby's going into a safe situation. But um, but that's why the law is written that way because sometimes people can do something in a crisis moment that uh, maybe maybe something changes for them. So yeah, so we're we're happy that the fire department is a, a main uh, partner with us. Um, we do see most of the babies have been surrendered actually in the hospital. So. Um, the family that joined us today at the board of supervisors meeting, we had a family join us and their baby was um, surrendered actually in a hall ambulance. So the mama knew right when she was delivering the baby that she was going to surrender it. Um, so lots of different situations that happen. I, 
I'd say it takes a lot of courage for these young women to make that decision because there can, there can be the wrong decision made. And we've seen that in the news recently, Janet, you and I meant, yes. talked about that a few weeks ago, what, it, what occurred, uh, was it New Mexico? Yeah, New Mexico. It was really sad to see. And, you know, there's cameras everywhere in our world. So they were, you know, able to capture the picture of the young woman putting the baby in the dumpster. And, and you had to, even though it's a heinous thing, you, you still feel what was going on in her life that she had no other option or she didn't, she didn't realize she had another option. And I think it made me as the chair of the coalition, just even more aware that we have to make sure people know that this is a, this is just a better option. Uh, why would you do that when you knew that this was an option? So I feel sad that she either didn't know about it or, um, you know, for whatever reason, that seemed like her only option. It was very sad, but th the baby did live. So we're happy for that. And is that a state by state or is this a federal program? It's a state by state. And how many of the 50 states, do you, do you have any idea how many states? Every state has one. Every okay. state has a law, a All safe right, surrender law. Some of them are called safe haven. Okay. I've seen them called the Moses baby law. Mm -hmm. So, um, but every single state in the United States has a safe haven or a state baby surrender law. Um, each state can, you know, everybody can do it a little differently and like, some states are up to one month you can surrender a baby. Some are actually up to a year. In California, we've uh, our law is it started in 2001 and then it was enacted um, a little bit later. But our law is up to three days of birth in California. You have to go to think too. I mean, going back to those times, it's a it's a life changing experience when you bring a child into the world and. And you yeah. need a, you need a lot of support and you need a lot of help from people. And some people don't have that support and they right. may even be going it alone. And that yeah. shock, that initial shock of now I have this second human being that I'm responsible for. I think a lot of the time folks are just, I, I can't handle that. They're not prepared for yeah. it mentally. Well, that it, moment. it's true. You're right. Um, and interesting to me when we started looking at different, even counties like Los Angeles County is so huge that they're able to publish more information about um, the, the types of people that surrender babies. And they found the age group or the demographics is from age 14 to 40. So I found that one really interesting because I think we, in our minds, we think that they're always, teenage women but um some of the studies that i read showed women in different cultures who either got married when they weren't who either got pregnant when they weren't married and certain dishonor in certain cultures mm -hmm. that caused them to feel they needed to surrender the baby so there's so many different reasons domestic violence um even poverty so um there's a lot of reasons that women you know feel like they need to surrender their baby. And we're just happy that the law allows someone else to care for that baby. Yeah, there is a solution out there. There is a solution, yeah. Mm -hmm. So when, when if, a, if a, a mother makes this decision and mm -hmm. come, approaches the fire department and says, I want to, you know, give up yeah. my baby. Right. Then, so then the baby's obviously taken in into protective custody and, and, and checked yeah. for health. And then are there additional services that may be offered back to the mother so that way she can get help if she needs it or what is the it seems like there i bet you there's a little bit more that completes this loop um, yeah for sure that's a really good question and the tagline for this law the, ca the california came up with the state is no shame no name no blame and so the idea behind it is really that people feel safe that it's anonymous completely anonymous that you can surrender your baby and your name is not taken um we do offer the the surrendering party the option of completing a medical questionnaire so that the people adopting the baby have some medical history um but most of the times what we've found when someone surrenders, they, they don't stick around for additional assistance. They're, you know, in a crisis and they just want to, you know, make sure the baby's safe. So there's not, um, but of course, if a person wanted help, absolutely, there would be help available to them. Um, if a woman goes into a hospital for, for instance, and delivers a baby and then realizes she can't, she doesn't want to keep it. The social work staff there, uh, provide a lot of options. You know, there's relinquishment, which is different than safe surrender. Um, and just they're provided all the options. So they're cared for in that way. They're, they're given all the information. And so a question for you, yeah. do you have to be the mother 
to surrender? What if, you know, you're a young couple and this happened to you and the mother just is, you know, can, can you be the, the husband or the boyfriend and, and bring the child? Yeah, I think um, that question comes up a lot. And I think that this is one of those times where it's the spirit of the law, not the letter of the law. Um, and so if a baby was surrendered by someone else, then the mother, you know, I believe that they would receive the baby. Uh, and then if um, there was some unusual situation, we would probably look into it. Mm -hmm. So, um, but uh, yeah, I think that there's so many scenarios that could happen, but most often we see the mother being the surrendering party. Yeah, I would expect. Yeah, it yeah. makes sense that you'd, you'd want to make sure that the baby is safe regardless of how it was received. Exactly. And yes. then you can kind of go backwards from there, but it, let's, let's right. put the, the baby in the, the safest situation right, it could line. be in. Yeah, right. exactly. Well, you mentioned earlier cameras are everywhere, and they right. are, right? Yes. Yeah. And the mom might not want to be ever seen because of a certain sure. culture. Right. Don't yeah. I'm not going to be on their camera. And so she'll ask her boyfriend or friend, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe an, another, another girl that's in her, be, yeah. in her circle that would bring the baby. And that's a great point to bring up, Greg, because like you said, when you've got different cultures that are involved, mm -hmm. then maybe mm -hmm. it is that it's the, the, it's a, a male mm -hmm. that brings the child in. Mm -hmm. It's about the safety of the child, put the child first. And then everything right. else can can uh, can get filtered out. So the answer is anyone can bring the child, right? Okay, that's and good. you know, yeah, there's so many scenarios I'm thinking of when you say that. So that you know, I I can't imagine that someone would take a baby and surrender it that didn't have their best interest at heart. But I'm you know, right. the world's a crazy place. Mm. So we've only seen it used in a good way here in Kern County, and so we'll just hope for that to continue. You know. It's it's yeah, just it's definitely sense. one of those things where you you think about it and it's like as a parent and a grandparent you you don't yes you know it doesn't kind of come to mind but it's like there are situations that uh, make it incredibly challenging it's an well, intense I, first seventy two hours I mean it, it really is. is if you're not think, mentally prepared for it it can be you know and you don't have any support structure around you don't have grandparents you may not have a may not have a significant other with you. I can see right. how some people could really make that drastic choice. And this this would be a better drastic choice as opposed to abandonment you know, and or something. Life worse. happens and hormones and chemicals mm -hmm. and you know, it's just such mm -hmm. an emotional roller coaster, yeah, even sure. on the best of times, yeah. you know? Yeah. Well, I'm a grand I'm a brand new grandma myself. My son and his wife just had a baby. Um, he's just almost four weeks old. And I think just like you were saying, you know how could you it just can't fathom that but we have a great support system and a family and there are people that are just not in that situation where it's terrifying you know so this isn't just an one of many options um which we we just hope it saves lives so we did see a situation i think you probably remember in shafter a few years back where the baby was um not not safely surrendered and did not live. So every time we hear these stories, we just want to do a better job of letting people know. And, you know, people that are on the street, maybe just different people in all different areas of life. We want them to know that this is, you know, no shame, no shame in it at all. And you, you mentioned uh, earlier, and I think it's important to hit home is that of the nine babies that were surrendered last year, six of those six moms last year came back and said, Okay, no, I, I needed I, my head's clear. I'm ready for mm -hmm. that. I'm ready to become the parent of this baby. And they right. they took that opportunity to come back. Yeah, so that's since 2006. Okay. I believe six have come back. Um, and six were surrendered just last year, but over oh. from 2006 to now, six uh, were six were um, reclaimed. Mm -hmm. So over that period of time, but yeah, I, I think that that makes sense that they wrote the law that way. I like that. Jenna, let's talk a little bit about the actual event at that moment. Yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, before the city council member, I reached out to Edward Martin. He's the COO of Adventist Health Tatchby Valley, and texted him and said. Does Adventist Health Tatchby Valley have a safe surrender program? I wanted to make sure that I was fully prepared for the city council meeting. And uh, man, he jumped back and said, yes, do you have a baby? And he was, I'm getting my team ready. What's up? <laughs> and I, I felt a little, oh, I didn't mean it that way. Yeah. I was just making certain yes, that you're ready to good. rock and roll at our hospital yeah. here in Tehachapi. And that's he was, great. man, he was, 
he was, he was gathering his team, like, you know, turning on the red light, get, getting ready to accept that baby. I love but, that. So that really made me feel uh, very, very good about the situation. Now, yeah. at the fire department, um, we can safely assume, I believe, that all firefighters, because who knows who's going to answer yes. the door. If you go and knock on the door, you just walk in, you're going to you're gonna maybe find a junior fire engineer. Has mm-hmm. he been trained to accept that baby? How does that work? Yeah, so the coalition that we have has all, you know, Kern County Fire, Bakersfield City Fire, and all the hospitals in Kern County. So they all have information or access to information of how the law works. And so we work real closely with the fire department um, and they're very aware of the law. They're equipped to know exactly what to do. Same with the, um, and, and how it works. There have been, I think one or two babies safely surrendered through the fire stations in Kern County. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the, they basically take the baby to, they call the ambulance, the ambulance takes the baby to the hospital. Okay. So they know that it's their role just to, you know, greet that person uh, with no shame and take the baby. And then we, it, after that, the baby goes to the hospital and is cared for. And then the baby comes into a foster home that is prepared to adopt. Right. So yeah, that's, that's how that process works. Okay. Yeah. Greg, you were talking about the, in, in general, talking about the coalition as well. So it's a group of mm-hmm. uh, dedicated individuals and then the agencies, uh, nonprofits, hospitals, and stakeholders. So first five Kern, Kern Family Healthcare, Kern County Fire, Bakersfield City Fire, Adventist Health Hospitals, Bakersfield, Delano, and Tehachapi, Dignity Health and Mercy Memorial Hospitals, Kern Medical, Bakersfield Pregnancy Center, and Kern County Right to Life are all part of this It's a large coalition, coalition yeah. And a lot of good people in Kern County just care about care about families and babies. We This county is awesome. I've lived here 22 years now, and I love that it's a big it's a really a pretty big good size county but it feels to me so small town because people care and there's just a lot of um generosity with needs and so we do see the coalition sharing our information making sure they get the word out um it's really a great great team of people and this is one of those things where we we this happens a lot you know in this line of work so to speak but it's one of those programs you're like you know gosh i wish we didn't have to have this but I'm glad we have it because it is, you know, there are those six, you know, those six babies this past year. And then the total, the mm-hmm. over 90 in the last, you know, since 2006. So it, it makes a difference in that life, obviously. And it's one of those things where you're like, gosh, I wish we didn't have to have it, but I'm sure glad that, that we do. That we do. Yeah. And what's neat to see is the families that do adopt the babies. Cause we get to meet them and just hearing their stories. Um, the family that shared at the board of supervisors today, the daddy is a BPD officer um, and the mom, they have a other children as well, but uh, just the joy on their face, seeing that little guy with them today, the little boy was with them and um, they're just so grateful. And so that child gets to grow up knowing they're, they're so loved. Um, So it's a great outcome. Now, October was, was national adoption month. Is it, am I right? November. November. Yeah, November. And how did that go for you? Really good. Um, I believe we, we had a huge event at the uh, juvenile court in Bakersfield. And I think the total being adopted that day was over 30. Um, and that those included children being adopted out of foster care and private adoption. So private adoptions could be, you know, a stepfather or mother adopting a child or an international adoption. So it was a, it was a great day just seeing those families together. And adoption is just so special. So much more, um, I don't know, it's just the tears in the people's eyes. They're, they have been waiting for this process. They're so uh, grateful. It's, just, it's, it's a wonderful thing to see. And what is your, your website address? I know there's, there's so much information that you yeah. guys have available with all the different departments, but I know specifically about adoption, you can even take a deeper dive into the Safe Surrender Program. Um, Yes. In fact, we added something to our website to just this week that you can find any location to safe surrender baby throughout the county. We've identified all the locations. Um, So our website is kcdhs.org, Kern County Department of Human Services.org. So we have that on our front page right now. You can click on the little tab and it'll show you a map of all the locations throughout Kern County where a baby can be safely surrendered. That's great information, and uh, we'll we'll make sure that here on Tehachapod we'll put a link to 
your website right there so that way people can can go to it and then beautiful Thank thing you. about podcasts is you're getting you guys are in the the planning stages of your own podcast and that's got to be exciting because you can take a topic like this and you can really take a deeper dive than what we can because you've got all the internal experts and and things that you've got in-house so so yeah. where where are you guys at with getting your own podcast launched yeah, and thank you for guiding us. We appreciate your input. We have come up with a name. We had a little internal um, competition, and our name is uh, The Heartbeat of Human Services. That's going to be our podcast name, and we're just coming up with our intro and our outro and, you know, all of that kind of stuff right now. And our first topic, uh, we, we're probably going to be interviewing a family that has um, received a safe surrender baby. So we're, yeah, we're excited. We're hoping to start in the next week or so. We have all our equipment. So um, probably not as fancy as yours there, but we're, we're starting slow and we'll, we'll get it going. I don't know if this stuff came out of key in, in Corey's garage to start. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. We're just kind of kludging it yeah. together. <laughs> Former employers might have saw a few pieces yeah, missing. There. Right. <laughs> but you, you'll learn, Jana, with, as the podcast goes, you'll, you'll find an audience for it that's looking for that information. And uh, it just... It just grows it organically as has been for our experience, at least, is that with the messaging and the topics and the guests like yourself that bring something and share information that people normally might not look for. And you, yeah, we expose them good. to it. So, you know, good luck with that. I, I know it's going to it's going to do really well. And Thank you. I Thank was, you for helping us. Oh, yeah. It was our pleasure. Anytime you any anything you need, just give us a holler. But the amount. Also, of thank you guys for um pitching in for our holiday cottage. We, we appreciate that too. You financially assisted us there. So we are grateful for that. We're happy to do it. Yeah, Thank that you. was, that, that spoke to us. That was an easy, was nice. easy one. As soon as we heard the conversation, Greg and I looked at each other and says, yeah, we'll make it happen. So, but Thank Jana, you. anything else that we want to talk about that maybe we haven't uh, touched on today? Um, I think that's the majority of a safe surrender. Just thank you for directing people to the website and just remembering that um, people in any sphere of y your influence could be in a crisis situation. So the more people know about this option, the better. You just never know when someone's going to need this information. So we're glad to be sharing it. Well, we appreciate your time. Well, you guys are got, doing God's work, so keep up the good yeah. work. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Appreciate that, you guys. Mm -hmm. All right, Jana. Well, you know you have an open invitation. Anytime you guys have a topic that you guys l would like to talk about, get, help get the word out, we're happy to help do that with you. And as uh, our community partners, we appreciate all the, the time and effort you guys put in there at the Department of Human Services and, and uh, look forward to talking to you again soon. Sounds good. Thank you. And we love to hatch you, so thank you guys very much. Well, that was Jana Schlegel. Department of Human Services, and Jana's been on the show before, but that topic, you know, before we've we've talked about, you know, helping um, with their holiday cottage and kids that are in the adoption and protective services program, this was another aspect of, of keeping our kids safe and giving um, young mothers an opportunity if they're contemplating you know, it's, are they doing the right thing or what should they do with their newborn? Here is a place to make sure that child stays safe. I mean, let's be honest. That was a tough topic. And I hope everybody listened to from beginning to end during that interview. Uh, because like I said earlier, life happens. You never know. And if people need help, we need to reach out and help them. And we have a process now where they can, um, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a way out potentially. And this all came together because Department of Human Services had reached out to the city of Tehachapi about considering a proclamation for Safe Surrender Month. We did that at the council meeting, and um, we had the fire department there as a representative and one of the partners of the program. But there, we covered a lot of other business at at the council meeting. So, Greg, we've got, you want to recap a few of the topics yeah, that several. went I'll that just, took place? Yeah, I'm more than happy to. And remind everybody, the listeners, call me. And, and, you know, if you don't get the agendas, please sign up to get the agendas. And we're happy to discuss any and all of these uh, topics. But we, uh, council authorized us to uh, form an underground utility district. That's a fancy term for putting the power poles uh, underground, taking them away from the aerial. And uh, that's from on Valley Boulevard from Curry Street going, uh, going west to Las Colinas. So we're really happy about 
moving forward with that project. That'll be a couple of years once we work with SCE. Thank you to Kern County for donating some funds, city funds, and we're going to uh, underground those uh, those utility poles there on Valley. So super excited about that. Our redistricting efforts continue to uh, to move forward. We have four public hearings. So on Monday night, we had number two of the fourth of, of the four. And so we're excited about moving that forward. And now then, with that, let me, because we just, we did that a couple of years ago, yeah. but there's a reason that it's right back yeah. to the topic. Because well, we, of the yeah, census. Yeah, we didn't have, we didn't have a huge change in population to the old districts compared to what is happening now. But when the 2020 census came out, they changed the census blocks a little bit. Well, the law requires that every census block be in the same district. We've got a couple districts that because of the new census blocks were dividing a census block. So they had to make a little bit of shift to uh, to make those legal. But at the same time, there was really no major change in population to one district or the other. There was a few adjustments that had to be made. But uh, at least what we saw from the first proposal it's not a huge change in, in any district lines at all. Little tweaks here and there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's it, bottom line is it didn't come. It's not our choice to do it. Right. We're required to do it whenever there's the census is done. So the original districting came apart in between two censuses. Yeah. So that's why it seems so close. So we together. won't touch this for another ten, 10 years. Ten years. Yeah. yeah, and change. So. Yeah, unless there's some giant changes, but uh, don't expect that. And then uh, Senate Bill thirteen eighty three. This is the organics, and I'll let Corey talk about this a little bit. He's been heading this up. It's very complicated, uh, but we want to assure people that we we have it managed and we're we're controlling it. And you know Yeah. It's it's one of those things. I mean there's it's one of those unfunded kind of state mandates that's coming down saying you need to add a third bin for green waste. And it's not just green waste thinking, oh yeah, well that's great. Lawn clippings and and tree trimmings. Well no, they want you to take food compo- com- compostable food waste and put it in this bin too to keep methane out of the landfill. I, yeah. So uh, anyway, we've had to do a bunch of things and technically everybody was supposed to have this adopted and in place by January 1 of this year. Very few municipalities across the state that didn't already have a program have added this program. Instead, we're having to do a lot of paperwork, adopt ordinances, uh, let them know that we plan to do this eventually. But like right now, financially, we're not prepared to do it. We don't want to pass this on to a ratepayer. We don't want to create the extra work and the extra trucks on the roads and the pollution from trucking the stuff from here to Shafter to get. So there's a lot of paperwork, though, that's had to be done in the process. Um, this was one last night, and it was actually to get us some grant money to go back and study some of those things I talked about. To study, you know, is, is there going to be space available in a lot of the places for these third bins? Um, and the, the thing I'm trying to reiterate to people is I had a great conversation with a resident the other day who called about some space limitations was, look, we're not looking to do this tomorrow. You know, we had to adopt the ordinance and it's been on the agenda a few times, but that was just to let the state know, hey, we're working towards this goal one day. But, you know, we're, we're looking at a timeline of 2023, 2024, potentially, if not longer to, to before we implement something like this, uh, because there's a lot of moving parts that, unfortunately, the sort of one size fits all approach from from the state doesn't fit into Hatchby and doesn't fit in a lot of areas. So we're, we're working just kind of sort of some some, you know, regulatory compliance at the same time without having to do it. So I just wanted to reiterate folks on that. And last night's authorization was to allow us to get about 20,000 in grant funds from the state to study some of these things and, and, uh, and work with residents about, you know, implementation of this at some point. All right. We also uh, welcome Hamad Jones, our new finance officer. So really excited about uh, Hamad starting and uh, hitting, he's hitting the ground running. That's for sure. He is. And, uh, and also let's say a big thank you to Hannah Chung. Mm Mm-hmm. Anna spent over 22 years dedicated here to the city of Tehachapi, leading that department, uh, an award-winning department. And uh, I just, I can't believe that Hannah's uh, last day was uh, just a few days ago, and we welcome Hamed, and, but boy, I, I'm going to miss Hannah. Just, <laughs> just with the fact that she would, you know, stop by and always have a smile on her face, the apples, the peaches, you know, <laughs> the, that she would bring in. And I know, she, you know, she's still here, but it's like, I, I don't get to bump into her in the hallway anymore. Yeah, for sure. And then trees, trees, trees. We're planting a lot of trees in the city of Tatchby. We've talked about this several times, Key, on Valley Boulevard, up in South Curry, and 
to Hatchapi Boulevard. If you haven't seen the trees, man, make a point of going to look. They are it's amazing. It's a game changer on it's Hatchapi Boulevard. Changer. I mean, the yeah. Curry medians were too because it was something for a while we were looking at, but. The amount just, I think because it's a long straight run on Tatchby Boulevard along that class two bike lane that was built a few years ago, it's, it's a, it's a wall of trees and it's, I just can't wait for them to all bloom year or two, get a little bigger. That's going to be a heck of a drive in and out of, of the city today. Well, I'm really matter. excited that we're planting a lot of oak trees. Mm-hmm. So uh, we're bringing back the oaks to Tehachapi. Super excited about that. It, Phil had mentioned in his comments uh, about uh, that, you know, back in the day, before the railroad was here, you could ride from one end of Tehachapi to the other. And That's never, what they say. And never hit, have sunlight hit you because of all the shade of the oaks and the railroad came through. I didn't realize that part of the history that, you know, but it makes sense. The railroad needed lumber. It's close. They mm-hmm. took it. And now here was an opportunity to bring oaks back. There you go. So okay. we've planted over 400 trees. So it's a very exciting project. And uh we're committed to maintaining them, and it's gonna they're going to flourish, and it's going to be just beautiful. When you drive into town, it's going to be very prideful. Yeah. You know, good stuff. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, coming down that stretch of Tatchby Boulevard, as I did the other day, and just it's seeing different. them you know, lined up and the guy's still working, putting stuff in, I was like, this is going to be cool. You, yeah. you Now it's it's one thing to, to see the, the, the renderings of what it's going to look like, yeah. but when you physically start to see mm-hmm. you know, all those trees, they're lined up, you've got the irrigation that's in place. Um, then you can kind of visualize the future. Yeah. yeah. And this was an air quality grant type deal. So that's why everything's a 15 gallon or below tree at this point. We couldn't plant a bunch of mature trees because per the grant and per the science of it all, it's smaller trees be- during their lifespan, you know, convert more, uh, you know, more CO2 into oxygen and all that good stuff. So that's why they wanted the smaller trees. Breathe easy. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, anything uh, that we want to talk about uh, that's coming up uh, event-wise or stuff that's uh, that's out there, or we're just going to... Uh, Valentine's Day. Yeah. Don't forget your sweetheart. Yep, right around the corner. Plenty of plenty of nice little date areas around the Tehachapi <laughs> area. Go. A lot to, of wineries are having special events. So, yeah, if you haven't been out to a winery lately, go ahead and take advantage of that. Well, we invite you to send in your, your show thoughts, comments, uh, an idea, for something, uh, just send us an email, media at TehachapiCityHall.com, and we'll be happy to see what we can do and, and run with it and go find a guest and bring them on the show and talk a little bit uh, deeper into whatever that topic is. That's media at TehachapiCityHall.com. We appreciate your time, and we'll catch you again soon on Tehachapod. Tehachapod is a conversation about Tehachapi designed for the people who live here or who would like to know more about this mountaintop community. If you have a question you would like answered, email media at TehachapiCityHall.com. We will try to answer it on a future episode of Tehachapod.